I'm really dedicated, Bo, to making people be legendary in their family life. If we're going to be legendary anywhere, why not be legendary there? There's so many ways we find direction on how to be successful in business, but a lot of entrepreneurs have no direction how to be successful at home. So I tried to write a book that could, could really share a piece of my story and also a simple rhythm and strategy I had put to work with my own family. And uh, it's a great starting point for if you're feeling like you're succeeding in business, but you're failing at home and you don't have to feel like this. And these principles can really give you a leg up. It's exciting to see. It's exciting to have conversations about life, sustainability, legacy, and not just talking about financing all the time. Don talks about really a commitment to leadership. I think that's the distinctive part that makes it so powerful. I've achieved the American dream and I'm committed to helping others do the same. Hello, America. Hello, world. I'm co-host and managing principal, Bo Parfit. We have the legend, Jim Shields, with us today. Jim is an entrepreneur, he's an author, he's a community leader, he's a husband, he's a father, he's a friend, and so much more. Jim, how are you today? Good to see you, Bo. I'm also a partner on some DLP deals, which is always nice as well. That's right, that's right. We love having you partner with us. Now, where are you today, Jim? Tell the world where you are. I am in St. Augustine, Florida, working from home today. Wonderful. All right, well, let's, let's dig into it. So I, I, hopefully we, um, you know, we have a good time here over the next seven hours. Is that okay with you? Yeah, six and a half, <laughs> seven, seven and a half. I'm sure we've got some eager listeners for that. I know. If you're listening, we're teasing, we're having fun. Uh, this is going to be uh, a, a good cadence and action packed here. So, Jim, what, what a lot of people like to hear is usually, a, like, what's your childhood like? What was it like growing up? And, you know, a lot of times, at, not all the time, but at times, your childhood can kind of, um, you know, help shape who you are today. So what was your childhood like? Yeah, I, I always struggled in school, Bo. School was not my thing. I was, I, I had all the things that I get paid for today got me in trouble in school. You know, standing up and <laughs> going outside the lines, um, you know, being creative and not following along. So I always struggled in school, grew up in a middle class family, which was a loving family, but also always struggled with money. And I remember my dad had this this uh, greeting card that he had given to my mother. It was, you know, a beautiful couple walking down a beach, I think, in the Virgin Islands. And he had written to her and it was on their, their dresser forever. And it said... Um, you know, this is going to be us someday. We're going to travel there with the whole family and do these kind of trips. And that never happened. Um, you know, he always struggled with money, wasn't able to get away. It wasn't lack of, it wasn't desire, lack of desire. It was, um, it was lack of freedom, lack of financial resource, lack of uh, initiatives in business. And all of his businesses failed. And, and my goal, Bo, was to live the opposite for me and my family. I love that. I love that. So, so tell us about your, your, first, um, your first kind of few jobs. First few jobs. First job was 11 and I had a paper route. So hopefully there's people who aren't too young in here going, you know, what the hell is a paper route? Because <laughs> it's kind of hard to imagine now. But yeah, I had a paper route and then I caddied, um, worked at the local supermarket. And uh, so I was, I was always the kid with two jobs, always. So it, it was never shy for me to go knock on someone's door and say, can I cut your grass? Do you need help with this? And uh, that, was, that was kind of the way I went up. It was odd job mania right from the age of 11. I love this. I think for a lot of people that are listening to this, you know, they're, they're going to have their stumbling blocks. And why I said, hey, I love your story so far. And I know your whole story, but I love this story. And for the audience listening, is these are stumbling blocks, right? You had... Your childhood was tough, but yeah. you turned those stumbling blocks into stepping stones, uh, yeah. which is what I love. So at, at what point did you kind of realize, hey, you know what? I, I think I can be an entrepreneur. You know, to my father's credit, although he always struggled, he always said to me, um, do something for yourself. Go out on your own. Do something for yourself. It's the only way you're going to create that, that freedom, that adventure all the things that you want to see. So it was a mixture of him pushing and also I had a grandfather who was a successful entrepreneur and he was your classic, went to school until the age of seven and then went to help the family just to survive. And he became a stock boy at a 
company called uh, J.J. Newberry. It was the big Woolworths Five and Dimes out on the West Coast. Well, long story short, and about 40 years later, he walked his way up to president of that company and then opened up the, the company Cloth World. I don't know if you remember that, but we were, you would have been, you're too young. But there were about 500 chain stores, and my grandfather founded that. So he was always this humble guy that only went to school until seventh grade, achieved things, and every Sunday when I was in my freshman year of college, he would call me and we'd have these conversations. And, uh, and man, those stuck with me, and he died at the end of that, that summer. And so uh, that last year was just so potent for me that I got to have these talks with this humble entrepreneur that really showed me what was possible, even if I didn't do great in school, which I never did. So he was kind of my guide and light in that sense. Well, I think it was Mark Twain that said, don't let school get in the way of your education. Um, yeah. I was going to say, not that school is bad, it's just not for everyone. We all learn in different ways, and there's different skill sets we have. I love the saying, Bo, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, well, it's always going to think it's stupid. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> and look at that with ourselves, with our kids, you know, going deep into our own genius can fill some really important voids if we're having the courage to go and actually put those to use. Absolutely. I love that you're able to have that <clears throat> nice dialogue with your, with your grandpa, your, your grandfather. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, especially um, yeah. So tell us about your, your first, your first, you know, we have a lot of entrepreneurs on the show or people that maybe think about want to be an entrepreneur or frankly invest with entrepreneurs. So when, when you, that first deal that you yeah, did, yeah. T tell us about that first deal. And was it, was it scary as heck? So Bo, I always say people go, what was the best real estate class you ever took? And I'm like, well, that's easy. It's 432 North M Street in Lompoc, California. You know, we're talking about 25 years ago. I mean, I was, I was way out of my league or so I thought. Here it is, a three-family house, fixer-upper, probate sale. I offered a 152000 with 2000 in closing costs. And, and the worst thing happened. It got accepted. And I remember standing in, in the condo that I was renting. And, man, I'm, I'm hyperventilating. I'm like, I got to come up with 10% down. That's $15,000. It needs to be repaired. Um, I'll never forget that deal. But that was, that was the first deal. And it, it was a taste of what was possible. I remember getting out of college, my first job, which was awfully boring and in corporate America. Nothing against anyone, but for me, it wasn't for me. And I got $24,000 a year working 60 hours a week in something I hated. And here it was doing this deal within three months of closing, renovating the property, raising the rents, getting it reappraised. I made like $85,000 in equity and was getting a cash flow of, you know, $800,000 a month. And I'm going, wow, there's something to this. But I was hyperventilating when that thing got accepted, Bo. And I was trying to think of everything I could, why I should back out of it. You know, that little fear guy on your shoulder. But I, I moved through and, and continued on. I love it. I love it. Um, I want to talk more about business here um, coming up here, but let's put this on pause a sec. Um, you, you're an author, so tell, tell, us, um, tell the world about your book and what was the genesis behind the book? Yeah, it's, it, it was, it's not a book I wanted to write, Bo. You and I have had talks on the sides about this. I didn't want to write it. I didn't feel comfortable writing. I wasn't a family therapist. I wasn't, you know, that wasn't my thing. But I did have a pretty unique family story, and I was pretty vulnerable to share it in some entrepreneurial circles. And people said, you need to write this book. And, and the bottom line, it's about there's so many ways we find direction on how to be successful in business. But a lot of entrepreneurs have no direction how to be successful at home. So I tried to write a book that could, could really share a piece of my story and also a simple rhythm and strategy I had put to work with my own family. And as you know, I have five kids now, but when my wife and I got together many years ago, you know, I didn't only fall in love with her, but two little boys. She was divorced with full custody, had been through an awful marriage with, you know, terrible things of abuse and alcoholism, stood up for herself, got out of it. I met her a few years later, and, and then all of a sudden, it's almost this instant family. The boys asked me to adopt them. So I started to do these. Yeah, right, Bo? It was, it was incredible. Yeah, that's awesome. Incredible. Such, such a time. I remember when I sat at the table and they said, you know, they asked, would you be willing to adopt us? And, I, you know... As I choke back the tears, I'm saying, well, of course, of course. And, uh, you know, when we came online, you know, they, 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 we, we hit it off instantly, but there were, there were trust issues. And here I am, you know, running two investment companies in real estate that, you know, barely made it through 08, but I didn't want to miss out. 
So I share about this one strategy that we started to do, this quality one-on-one -on -one time that we would schedule and the result it had on, on not only our relationship, but also now seeing, you know, following the things they really wanted to pursue in their life. And that one thing, well, I wrote the book, you're talking Jamie's breastfeeding our daughter and we're releasing it on Amazon. And luckily I had some good friends who loved it, supported it, some big podcasters, and it went to number one in family, entrepreneurship, and, uh, and there was a third category. I don't remember it off the top, but it had an underground following, Ooh. which was exciting. And, and you know yeah. what's nice is, is we don't advertise it. We, there hasn't been a big push on it. But all of a sudden, there's people like you and Don and others saying, you know, we read that simple, small little book, and it really helped my family. Thanks for writing it. So it's been a really special part of my life. And tell the world the name of the book and where they can find it. The Family Board Meeting is the name of the book. Our name of our company is 18 Summers. A lot of us know, oh, you're the 18 Summers guy. So the name of the book is The Family Board Meeting. You have 18 Summers to connect with your children. And uh, it's on Amazon. You can pick it up anywhere. I like to brag that when people go to events and there's lots of good books given out, mine gets read first because it's the shortest and <laughs> at least <laughs> threatening, you know, to say, oh, yeah. I'm getting into this. Will I be able to finish it? The answer is yes. Uh, but this one little strategy now is, is impacted thousands of families and the principles in it are things you can carry into your marriage, to relationship with other people in your family. And uh, it's a great starting point for if you're feeling like you're succeeding in business, but you're failing at home and you don't have to feel like this. And these principles can really give you a leg up. I love it. And I agree. I've read the book twice. Um, I keep it close because it's, it's a book I like to read every year. So um, I love the book. And Don Winter, um, who's, our, who's the founder and CEO of DLP Capital and his wife, Carla, they adopted a child, so now they have three boys. They're also a huge fan of the family board meeting, and they have their they have their family board meetings. So they do it. They follow your program, yeah. um, and Don, Don speaks very high, highly of it. And I do it in my family too. We call it uh, something a little different, which is something yeah. you say too: is Hey, call, call the meeting whenever you want. Ours is a, you know, a father son and father son's trip, and um, you know we do it about every four four months, and you know that's what works for us. Exactly. And that's what it's about. It's your own game. I always tell people entrepreneurship, family life, your personal hobbies. It's your own game. You decide. These are just markers. They're not like absolute rules. Remember, I didn't do good in school. So absolute rules never really suited me. I love it. All right. So tell, tell us what, tell, tell the audience, hey, here's, here's my company. Here's what I do now. Yeah. Well, I have been a real estate investor for 24 years now. And I'm partners with Chris, who you know, in a build-to-rent venture here in Florida. We build in 14 different markets, and uh, we help investors build their own portfolios along with our own. So that's one of my main focuses, along with dabbling in RV resorts, which you guys partnered with us on the Island Oaks RV Resort, which was a very exciting project. I had the fun job of traveling cool. two different summers for six weeks and going out and investigating what the best parks looked like and brought the idea back to our designers. And, uh, and I think the proof's in the pudding with the dynamic start we're getting. So that's my main niche in real estate. But, but Bo, I've never been able to get away from this family thing. You know, my heart and soul is you guys, although we're partners in real estate, you've asked me to speak at your events four times. And that's never about real estate. It's always about family life. Because I try to save, uh, share simple strategies and rhythms that are going to help entrepreneurs succeed at home. And that 18 Summers business blends right in with my real estate investment company and is a pinnacle of who we are, what we're about. And I'm proud to say not only do we get returns for our people in real estate, but also in home life. And I think that's one of the things that really made me unique in how I wanted to be and how I wanted to approach business. I love that. And um, can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, that kind of that deep connection that, I, you, you know, your DNA, your book, your partnership with DLP. So when talk a little bit about, you know, Don Wenner and DLP and that partnership and how, how did, how did that come about and how did you, how did it, did it just feel right or kind of, kind of walk us through that? Yeah, I, I was introduced to DLP through mutual friends and we were, we were neighbors, you know, and here you guys are this big company. I'd heard the name, but we all run crazy in our own directions. Right. And we got introduced. And I remember we sat down for the first time and we were going over some land deals or something, but I started to talk to Don about taking this six week adventure with my family to go investigate RV resorts. 
And first of all, Don was like, oh, I just bought an RV for my family and going up to Asheville. And so we just started to talk about family. And next thing he said, well, tell me about this RV resort. And next thing you know, you guys are our partner on it. And as I started to share some of my family strategies, I started to get invited to not only do more deals with you guys, but hey, can you come in and help with this, this leadership uh, event for our internal staff? Hey, can you speak at our next main event? So it was a very organic growth, I think. Uh, also for Don and I, um, I've, I'm a big believer in value-based decisions and value-based learning and value-based company. Not that you have to be exact of people, but you know, when people share your values, it's easy to work together, I think. And as Don was going through his adoption, well, we recently adopted as well. So we were trailing by, by about you know, two months behind him and Carla with our adoption. So we're checking in on each other, we're going through. So it was a really exciting time. In fact, the last time I was on the podcast with Don, you weren't, you weren't on that show, I never have my phone on a podcast. Uh, Bo, never. I mean, that's just rude. You know my focus on intermittent tech fasting. However, that day I had to. The reason was that morning, the adoptive mother had gone into labor. So Jamie's on call. And so as I'm talking to Don, my phone is buzzing. And, and so I pick it up and Jamie said, as soon as you're done with Don, you need to get to the hospital. So I literally finished the interview and uh, I'm like, he's like, oh, that was great. And I'm like, Don, I got to go. And he's like, What's, I'm like, the baby is being born right now. He's like, wait, what, right now? And I'm like, yeah. I said, how funny. We've been talking back and forth. We were doing the podcast together. And, and uh, yeah, that was a pretty funny day. So I think it's just we shared values, uh, that family value. Uh, it was easy for us to, to get along and to strategize. And, uh, you know, it's always an honor with, with the groups that you guys are being together to see the value in what I talk about. Because let's face it, Bo, in what we do, not everyone's going to see the value in what I talk about. Uh, but you guys have, and it's been a really nice blend for, for us to work together. Oh, well said. What a story. That you're, you're <laughs> literally, we're, we're in the middle of talking with Don on the podcast. And, oh, my gosh, the baby's being born now. I love that. He's like, go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. Fun day. Don's really... This is pretty cool. I mean, it's what I've heard Don say is, hey, it's fun to make some money together. You know, it's fun to kind of do some things together. But what, what's really the greatest gift we can give someone? And that's the gift of more time. Yeah. Because with more time on this earth, we can hug our friends and family. You know, we can make more of an impact, you know, build our resources, give more to charity and so on and so forth. So um, time is really a special, special gift. And the the technology and the science and the information exists right now to live another 10 or 20 more years, at least, of healthy, active living. Yeah, so absolutely. With, with, so talk about your, um, a little bit about your health, wellness, and longevity program. Yeah, this is, another, this is another core value of mine that we've spoken about. You know, I really dove in for just, I was fascinated with this. I was just absolutely fascinated. So I'm already into the, I did an NAD treatment this morning, NAD treatments and stem cells and exosomes and different vitamins and intermittent, uh, intermittent fasting. These are things that are, I'm already really involved in and it excites me. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story, Bo. I went back this summer to Ireland to go visit my roots. I still have some family back there. I promised this trip with my dad. As you know, my dad passed away last year, unfortunately, but I kept that promise to take this trip. So I went back and I got to stand in front of the grave of my great grandmother and she died. Uh, it was 51 years before me at the age of 60. And I thought, wow, I have the opportunity instead of standing in front of her grave, my great grandchildren can stand in front of me still mm -hmm. in good health. And I have that opportunity now. And it, it really started to excite me. But it also challenged me where I'm doing the things, Bo. I'm, I am practicing these things and, and really looking forward to learning even more because there's so much to learn in this area. I don't want to see people linger in good health. And I really want that to stick in. We, can, we now have the ability to linger in good health. And, and you say, well, that's an oxymoron. How can you linger in good health? If you are uncomfortable in your own skin and your relationships are in the toilet, I believe you can still linger in good health. And what I want to challenge people to do, and something I, I sat on the west coast of Ireland and wrote for three days about this, Bo. Three days. Just, just totally inspired about, I have that saying, and Don shares it now, you know, let's, let's be a leader in our industry, but famous at home. I'm really 
dedicated, though, to making people be legendary in their family life. If we're going to be legendary anywhere, why not be legendary there? And that's something that I want to talk about, I want to challenge on, because I think each of us has the ability to be legendary in our family life. And how, how is it going to look, you know, if I'm standing in front of my child's child's child? That's going to be incredible. And I want to <laughs> earn that right. I mean, think about that for a minute. You want yeah. to talk, you know, I, I know you're picturing with your two little ones, right? You have yeah. two, right? Yep. Yeah. The, you're, could you imagine being in front of their child's child? And you're still hiking mountains with them. It, it, it's a different realm of possibility. It's a different realm of enthusiasm. It's a different realm of responsibility, right? I want to stand in, in front of that person with, with great pride and with saying, wow, I've helped guide them to become a, a, a really genuine, giving, productive person. And I had a piece of that. And I'm still here with them, doing it side by side with them. There's some real excitement in that for me. I love that. Well said. This is such a, a rich interview. I love it. Um, and you mentioned age earlier. You know, hey, maybe I was a little too young to know about that uh, that topic you brought up. But but I should tell the audience. You know, we've been doing this longevity a long time. So Jim and I are actually what we're 105 years old, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> okay. under, well, it's 105 and a half. They say once you get, you know, if you're under six. And then you're over 90, you start over 80, you start counting in halves, right? So, so I like to go with halves now. <laughs> yeah. I love it. You know, I, I heard something the other day where um, the average, 30 years ago, the average American had, um, had three friends. Wow. Today, the average American has 1.5 friends. And a common definition of loneliness um, is having three or, three or less friends. Wow. And the, the implication for your health is it's the equivalent of smoking about 20 cigarettes a day if you're really lonely. So wow. isn't, that, isn't, isn't that, that staggering? That's, that's, so so yeah, how do you think, who, who are some of your buddies, uh, you know, it's friends and family. Do you, do you kind of get together with friends and family, um, you know, friends and or family you know, once a week or, or once a month? Or how do you think about that? Well, Sunday dinners are the grandparents come over. It's our whole family together. Uh, we have one night a week where it's just us and the teens that get together. Um, and and then we have a night with, with the younger ones. So we do kind of divide up. And then I have my board meetings. I have my date night. So that's my core family. Now, as far as friendships, that's one thing that my wife said, I am so impressed that you've kept childhood friends. Like I have friends, I, I just, at the Sawgrass Marriott on Sunday, I said, I need to go up real quick before dinner. I had a friend from kindergarten fly in for a business meeting. I went up, met him for a beer, and, you know, we just laughed. So if I've done something pretty good, it's keeping in touch with friends because I can honestly say I have a few dozen friends that I've step, stayed in contact with. I think I could call them at 3 a.m. That's a big one for me, Bo. Who can you call at 3 a.m.? Mm -hmm. And would they feel comfortable calling you at 3 a.m.? And I've had some really good friends, not only from that, but from my early entrepreneurial days, were taking me to many trips to Australia. You know, at my wedding, I think we had people from seven different countries. You know, when we got married in Costa Rica, some of them spanning from kindergarten, you know, all the way to, you know, my entrepreneurial pursuits. But friendship has been a really important thing for me. I was the class clown. I love to self-deprecate. I don't take myself too seriously. And I think that's <laughs> been a big help. Um, but it's been a really nice thing to keep old friendships and build new ones. And uh, I've really, that's something that I've, I've really taken a lot of time to do. And some people would say I've probably could have built bigger companies and bigger businesses, but I'm okay that I didn't. I've built big enough and I've kept a good balance on that other side. Jim, I love it. I love this conversation. Thank you so much. Um, everybody, this is Jim Shields, uh, the legend. Please check out his book. Um, his project that we did together, Island Oaks. Um, Island, Oaks yeah. Island Oaks in Florida is fabulous. Check that out. Uh, Jim, I, this is, I mean, you made my day better. Thank yeah, you. Good. You too, Bob. It's good seeing you, buddy. I'll see you soon. See, see you, my see friend. You. Take care.